Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be looking at the TI Regional Qualifier games my team just played. They're currently going on, and my team's next match is on the 19th. So if you guys wanna check it out and support your boy Speed, it would mean the world. I always see you guys commenting in the Twitch chat, and it's very cool. I, I really appreciate all the kind comments and things people say. So I do see it, and I appreciate it. But right, without further ado, I'm gonna get into this game and kind of just break down every thought that goes through my team's head. That's not fully true, because I can't get into some of our strategy, but just kind of the general ideas that you can implement from our gameplay, and specifically from my gameplay, uh, that I use that you guys can use as well, and let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is going to help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. So in the laning stage, I actually messed up a lot. I think I was a little bit nervous and kind of just not lost focus, but just wasn't at my best right away. Because basically any time, and this is a very important tip guys that you can steal right away. If you're playing off lane and your position four is late to the lane, you have to just wait. You have to wait, there's, there's no other choice. Maybe I could double shell the wave and use the double ion shells to protect myself. And I'll do that if my support isn't even close, I will double shell the wave, I'll shell here and then I'll shell again here. But he's close enough where I can wait for him, and so that's what I should do. I should wait for him, but I don't wait for him. I kind of just immediately try to pull aggro. I don't respect the enemy, and I get stunned. It's a good play from them to punish the fact that I'm, I'm late to the lane. I get hit by a damn blood grenade, which I hate that item, and I take quite a bit of damage. I take a lot of damage, and this is a problem because now next time they stun me, uh, they can continue to chip me out, right? I, I'm definitely in a pretty vulnerable position now, so this was a bit of a grief. I decided to double uh, to shell up the next wave, but due to my poor HP pool from earlier, they can make a very easy kill attempt. On top of that, there's probably no real need to shove the wave here uh, or to shell the wave here, right? I'm in a situation where uh, the lane's gonna slightly push into me due to this range creep and I wasn't gonna get that range creep anyway, right? It was gonna get denied. I don't feel comfortable contesting it regardless of shelling it or not. And so yeah, it was just it was just a big mistake and I ended up going down first blood. So not waiting for my position four and then I would say unnecessarily shelling the wave definitely costed me a bit there. Fortunately, it's not the end of the world and you should never see deaths as the end of the game. My tiny makes a great play and I appreciated Moose making this heads up play of dragging the wave. This kind of allowed us to get the wave in a very comfortable position under our tier one tower. And now my main goal is to aggro deny just to keep the lane exactly where I want it, right? I wanna make sure that I don't ever have to approach the enemy's tower ever again, if possible. And so I'm gonna actively not use shell here, right? Maybe I'll do it if I think I'm gonna miss a CS, but for the most part, I'm gonna just make sure I get my CS and I'm not gonna shell unless I have to. I used shell here specifically to get these last hits, which I did, right? So I was able to get all the last hits and now we're about even with the life stealer, which in terms of net worth puts us at about even. Now, unfortunately, the Venge is pretty farm because of the first blood she got, but all in all, we're feeling pretty damn good. And kind of the nice thing about getting the wave in a good position here is the fact that I don't have to use shells. And this means once I hit level three, now I can start to shell the wave, which is what we do here. And the reason why is Moose made a good call. He said they stack the pull camp. And so we know they're gonna pull. They stack a pull camp and we don't contest it. We're kind of screwed, right? And so we make a good play. I shell Moose here to aggro the wave. And we, with the double shell, we just wiped through the small camp, <laughs> which was kind of funny. And all of a sudden from dying, we're like chilling, right? I died but for first one, but it kind of didn't matter because we got all the CS on the last few waves. I CS very well. And then we got the stacked small camp, which is like a ton of gold. It's probably like a full wave, you know? And so we're chilling, right? We're just chilling. And now I have a Vanguard in minute four. So not my greatest start, but that's okay. Because, you know, as, even if you choke, if you understand, uh, some good decisions in the next few minutes, you can kind of make up for it. And this is all, everything I'm showing applies to the safe lane role and even to the mid lane role to some extent. If you're a mid lane player, right, you have to learn how to try to get the wave back under your high ground. That's a skill. If you're a safe lane player, same thing. These are all skills you can develop in order to become a more consistent Dota player. Now from there at this point, it was kind of just a game of like pushing out the wave and honestly mostly trying to ignore this guy, push out the wave and then farm the large camp. Um, and so I, I'm not going to really focus too much on this. I, I really am just trying to clear it as fast as I can. 
um, without him being close. Because if I clear it when he when he's nearby, he can kind of deny a bunch of the creeps. I think I even end up using wall on him at some point just to push him away. I don't know. Yeah, I force him into a creep. So we're chilling, really just at this point pushing out the wave. I don't threaten Life Stealer, but he doesn't really threaten me either. And I'm also going to pull the wave uh, from behind the tier one to uh, to the medium camp here and going to get really, really farmed. And so I'm more than happy. So honestly, the biggest thing I could recommend to you guys if you're a Darkseer player is that you specifically focus on pushing the lane and actually farming the tri camp. I think a lot of people have this bad idea on offlane that they're supposed to like run at the enemy, but it's matchup dependent, right? How am I supposed to run at Lifestealer? Well, I'm not. What am I going to do to Lifestealer? Of course I can't run at Lifestealer. So what am I going to do? I'm going to play for farm. And so I use Surge to get here so I can stack the camp. Optimally, I got here earlier, I actually messed up because what I want to do is stack this at 52, 53, and then stack this at 54, 55 and double stack because you can farm ancient stacks on this hero especially if you get Seeds of Serenity. Because what I do is I, I take the Seeds of Serenity, so I'm like hyper tanky and have a ton of regen and can take agents. And then I always buy a Sol Ring. I love Sol Ring on this hero because it, I just feel very tanky and I feel very comfortable just spamming Ion Shells to farm, like spamming them to farm. I feel like if you don't buy uh, Sol Ring on this hero, you just, you can't really spam it to farm. You can shell yourself and you can take a neutral item and, and shell occasionally, but it's not that great. It's, I almost died bottom here. This is just a great global in the TP. Uh, that was a call out from my silencer here. So wonderfully done from him. Shout out B9 on that one. He completely saved my ass. And then we're gonna farm up some ancients. And the way in which you do this is you just shell one of the small creeps. Anytime you're shelling, uh, killing a camp, you just shell one of the small creeps, right? For instance, if it's a Hellbird Smasher camp, you just shell one of the, the small creeps and then you kill off the camp. It's very, very easy. On top of that, another play I like to make as well against a lot of these carries that I think people don't really understand, uh, like being valuable, is just using the wall to bully them a bit, right? This guy can kind of be a nuisance to me, but I don't mind using wall on him. It's only in a 100 second cooldown. It's 125 mana, which is really not a lot. Uh, neither are really that long or it's not a lot of mana. And so I'm pretty happy to just use it to kind of have a copy of him that I can shell, right? I can shell it. I even shell it and search it. And I'm just going to run it at him. And it's going to poke him, right? This thing is pretty strong. It gets him a little bit low. Now when he turns off his armlet, he's at 400 health and he's a little bit uncomfortable, right? I'm not saying it's completely griefing him. Some lanes, it actually does kind of completely grief them. For instance, um, AM illusions, right? The AM gets mana burn. It's a real grief to the anti-mage as I messed up here. This was, this was stupid. I should not have died to this. It was stupid because of the fact that I hadn't seen them in a while. Like I haven't seen Shadow Demon in a while. And at this point, all I have to do is shell the wave and take Ancients because my PA doesn't have Battle Fury yet and she wasn't having a great game, so she's not going to have it for a while. And so I don't need to like play this wave, right? It's just kind of stupid, but it is what it is. I don't see them. So all I need to do is shell out the wave or honestly, I don't even I don't even need to shell out the wave. The reason why I don't need to shell it out in this case is because of the fact that he's here. Because he's here, he's going to clear it, right? He's going to clear it. I'm going to farm this camp and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to farm the wave under tower. So I don't even need to push out the wave here. It's just stupid. And they have a shadow demon who counter surge really, really hard. They have a direct counter to the dark seer disengage. And so I need to know this and, and play more defensive. It's just a stupid death because it's completely unnecessary for me to be there. But obviously in the moment, I didn't calculate these things and I ended up going down. But all in all, I feel pretty comfortable about how the game's going. We were certainly losing the game. Thankfully, Red 2 was popping off on the Ember Spirit here. He was farming a lot this match and got a lot of key kills. So he really had a good game going five and one, certainly carrying the early game for us with the help of our supports, Moose and B9, uh, doing a great job. They, they connected very, very well this game. So that was uh, very impressive from them. But yeah, we ended up taking a mid fight here. I think I kind of connect on this and it's because we knew they were gonna sort of collapse. So the main thing I wanna do is I wanna shell the wave. Because anytime I'm leaving an area as Darkseer, I like to shell it. The reason why is it makes it hard to read wh what I'm doing. Because if I shell the wave, it's like, oh, I'm farming it, right? Darkseer's farming bottom. Where if I don't shell it, it's like, oh, the wave's just static. Maybe Darkseer's ganking or maybe he's farming triangle. But if I shell it in, they don't really know what I'm doing, right? Because I'm going to shell it in if I'm there or if I'm not there. It's very unclear to them. And so, um, yeah, I shell it in and I end up... Do I run mid here? Yeah, so I shell it in, it's under tower. Now this guy responds. We see them kind of coming mid here and we have tiny dagger. And so I want to enable the tiny dagger, right? Because obviously he's very, very strong. With the ion shell on tiny, he can keep them in place for a very, very long time. And he finds a, a big two man combo, toss back on the venge, good global to kind of get the tiny out. We kill off the venge early, two man back wall, kind of keeping these guys controlled, TP it from the PA, which is a good play. And we kite them out. So it's a good jump, right? It's a kind of a good time to connect. Maybe we slightly overextend here on, on red but it's a good time to connect, right? Because we have the tiny blink and now he can go back in, get another combo. And I think we kite out and kill, I think we kill life. No, 
yeah, he goes into Timber. But that's fine. They they like buy back Shadow Demon. It's a good fight. Sure, we lost our, our Ember, but that was certainly a net positive fight. Now in this game, I'm going Mech into Pipe. And the reason why I'm doing that, it might not look like a great Pipe game, but there's a couple things I like to mention. You might be saying, Speed, why aren't you going Crimson against Beastmaster and Lifestealer? Well, first of all, the Lifestealer is rushing MKB, which is magic damage. Like, it is a lot of magic damage. That's something to keep in mind. This guy went Ags on Beastmaster. So he went the magic damage Beastmaster build. And yes, Pipe sucks against Timber because all of his spells are pure, which I knew. However, their supports are going to do pure damage in the early game, and they're a big portion of the damage. This is their main early game source of damage, right? Their way of winning early game fights is primarily going to come from Beastmaster's Axe. It's incredibly good in the early game, and I feel like it has to be addressed. And the best way to address it is Pipe, because how it works is um, when you go on him, if he has the drums of Slom going, he'll heal. But if you pipe your teammates and he doesn't do any damage because they're piped, he does not heal. And so I find any time I'm playing Beast with Ags, the best way to deal with it is, if you can, to buy a pipe. The reason why I don't want to go Greaves is, well, there's nothing really for me to dispel. What am I dispelling? Frankly, nothing, right? Uh, there's, you know, there's nothing. I don't need to dispel anything. And so I don't see the reason, reason to buy Greaves this game, right? The bonus armor is like, it would be good. I would be happy to buy it if there was like, a, right, if there was like a Helm Dom beast. It would make a bit more sense for like the armor when people get low or I could go Crimson. However, the reason why Pipe is better than Crimson this game, in my opinion, almost no matter what, is because they have a Shadow Demon. And Shadow Demon ulti purges. It does not purge Pipe Aura, but it does purge Crimson. Why? I don't know, but it does. Now at this point in the game, I think this is where kind of the enemy team was, I don't want to say they were lost, but I didn't really feel like they knew exactly what they were doing. Our PA was behind, but she was able to catch up with her Battle Fury timing. And this is kind of what we wanted. We wanted the game to slow down. We felt that our PA has incredibly good matchups. The only thing they have for PA really this game is like a Rage Lifestealer. But even then, I feel like PA can kite around him pretty well. I feel like she has very good matchups outside of that. Uh, she isn't threatened by this like Ags Beastmaster. Like when she BKBs, the supports can't really control her. Uh, Shadow Demon is good against most carries during BKB, but not really PA because she blink strikes around, right? So she's not really worried about that. And that's why we picked it. They don't really have like, they have Swap and Roar, which is kind of decent, but we have Global. And so we're going to Global the PA jump and we're going to Tiny jump the PA jump. We're going to Vac the PA jump and Chains. And we have a lot of control. And most importantly, we have Global. Uh, so they pick these two save supports, right? Swap and Shadow Demon all. And then we just have Silencer and it's like, okay, we need some burst damage to make sure we get Valley out of the global. Perfect. You know, we have Tiny, we have now PA. And so I feel like there's a lot of synergy. And so we felt that even though we messed up our lanes, like I didn't lane, well, I lane fine. I didn't lane great. I lane okay. And so even though we messed up our lanes, right, we lost a uh, PA into Beast lane and I didn't do great again. I could have done better against the Lifestealer. Uh, even though that was the case, we were pretty comfortable going into the mid game. We kind of just felt like we needed to be patient and wait for opportunities. And this was one of those opportunities. And this is why people, I, I really think they mess up Dota. They just try to force too much. Like, I'm not going to lie. This guy throws the game so hard here. To keep it real simple, why is he pushing the tower alone? If your team shows mid, you can't push a tower alone. That's how Dota works. You have to see it as numbers, guys. If you're trying to get good at the game, you have to look at it as a numbers game. It's not simple. And I don't understand everything. Like, otherwise I'd be winning TI. Maybe I will. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, like they show we have a watcher here. This guy shows on the watcher. This guy shows on midwave. Timber showed on the last midwave. You can't do that, right? And then like proceed to not leave. He would have probably been fine if he cleared the wave and left. I, maybe he just felt because he was on his pipe axe timing. And trust me, you are strong on this timing. The problem is, is if you get silence and you can't get off your roar, your drum st stacks don't start going. That's how the thing works. If you roar, you get 15 stacks, which is you get up to 20 and it gets better the more stacks you have. If you have no stacks, you don't do shit. You're basically worthless, right? You just died a Deso. And that's what happened. He j we just got a Deso timing and we didn't even global. I don't think we globaled. Yeah, I think we globaled now. And so it just kind of goes to show like, he's just not understanding the map and you got to understand the map. It's just a huge, huge throw from him, right? It's a huge throw from him. And we're able to chase forward. Nothing really crazy here. All I have to do is kind of search my teammate. Oh, I know I searched myself. We knew this guy didn't have rage, just kind of keep him in place. I, I know I'm, I'm not like comboing with anything there, but the, the point of vac walling there is just to keep them in place because we're in such a state of advantage where we're chilling, right? We're going to be able to push forward, clean up the fight. And then from there, what should I do, guys? Go back to farming, right? We win the fight, going back to farming, kind of cleaning up camps, hitting my next item timings. A lot of people would lolly gag. They'd walk around and just do random shit. Don't do random shit. If you're playing a hero that can farm, farm. Right? That's why I like playing Darkseer so much. If the game's going poorly, you can farm. If the game's going well, you can farm. If the game's 
50-50, you can farm. Some heroes can't really do this, and that's why I don't like those heroes as much, right? There's certain heroes that I just think are, are much, much harder to play, and they force you to play in certain ways. Where with Darks here, fight ends, and now we go from, you know, 1k up to, yeah, most of our net worth was gained from the fight. Let's be, let's, let's be reasonable. Most of our net worth is gained from this fight, right? We go, we go up to about 4k, 4k lead. But then after the fight ends, because we have such efficient heroes, we can push up to that 5k lead. We can probably go towards that 6k lead, which we had until they took Tormentor, which whatever, it's it's kind of cheap. It's not it's not fake net worth, because yes, you get shard on Shadow Demon, which is good. It, it's definitely good. If he can use it before global, he can dispel uh, anyone who gets global, which is actually really great. So it's not fake, but then we go back up to 5k anyway, right? So because we have good farming heroes and we understand, hey, let's split up and farm, we're able to build a bit of a lead here, right? Even though they took Tormentor, uh, we are able to maintain our lead and basically uh, somewhat build a lead and work towards our next items. And yeah, from there we build up Greaves just because somewhat slot issues, but also I do feel like the, the bonus armor is nice, right? It's, it's mostly for slots to some extent, which maybe actually isn't a good reason. Maybe I should just buy a Hex. Yeah, from there, I honestly feel like our team fight's more superior than them. All I really feel like we had to do at this point was kind of take a nice five on five. Obviously, it's not that simple. It's not like we just automatically win the fight. For instance, like their life stealer, if he gets on top of PA, will destroy her. He wins that 50-50, like it's not even close, right? He's MKB Satanic and double her health. Like, he destroys her, but I feel like the problem is, is he's going to have a hard time doing that. And once again, I don't know what these guys are thinking. Like, honestly, I, they were like so not on the same page. And th that kind of it's a big problem in Dota. You, you need to be on the same page. Like, I don't know what they were reading. Like, I don't know what where they thought we were. Maybe they thought we were bottom because like, yeah, they must have thought we were bottom or mid. I think Ember showing mid made them feel comfortable, right? They kind of see this Ember pushing out mid. But that doesn't mean shit, and they should click on him and say, he has an active fire remnant. I don't know how they think, yeah, I don't know how they think they're safe, but they did. And they show on the wave, and it's just free, right? We jump this beast, it's very easy to kill him because we kind of have this Deso PA, she BKBs up. They swap, maybe we should have global to prevent the swap, but whatever, it ended up not mattering. It's a very easy back wall from there, like, obviously it's, it's super, super easy, and... Yeah, they die, I mean, Lifestealer, maybe they can fight with Lifestealer, probably not, because their beast is dead, but... Maybe they'd have a chance, but they didn't even have a chance, right? We wiped them and now we're 9k ahead. And I think we get Aegis soon too. And this game's, yeah, I mean, it's not impossible for them at this point, but we have way better team fight. Like it's not even close. We have Vac Wall, like they have a beast who frankly falls off. Like I play this build, it's a tempo build. If you get it early, which he did, and he was having a good game. If you get it early and take some good fights, it can feel like the best thing in the world. Like this build can really feel OP, but they couldn't like line up any fights. They just couldn't. They, they, for some reason, weren't able to, like, find good fight selection. This guy got jumped twice in a row, and and I really, really, it really, really, really costed them. They, they just couldn't get on the same page. Same thing here. Like, they just kept... These guys are clearly... I, mean, I don't know if they're not focused or they're not communicating, but it's it's very easy to pick these teams apart. I'd love to give my team a ton of credit, and we deserve it. We, uh, we understand and punish the gaps, but, like, Beast shows mid here. We see him, and we see his team top. What do you think happens when we see Beast mid? We jumped them top, <laughs> like, but it's right. It's a game of numbers and hopefully you can see like, that's how you should be thinking in your pubs. And you might be like, but I can't get my, I can't get my team on the same page speed. There's no way I can take advantage of the advice that you're giving me. But the reality is you can, you can take advantage of it. It's just like, maybe you only have three people following you, but they're showing two heroes mid and one hero bot. And so you have a 3v2. It's just like situations like that. Or maybe they showed four heroes top for a team fight and their carries forming bottom alone. That's what you gotta be paying attention to. That's how you should be thinking. That's how I think in most of the games and another free team fight, right? Very, very easy. Their life slayer just instantly dies to like triple shell plus deso. And yeah, this game's about over. So I'll show you how we clean it up. But 17K lead, obviously it's pretty easy from this point on to finish up this match. Just took a couple of good fights. Clean initiations, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. We go high ground and all we had to do was kind of, honestly, I think we were a little bit too wussy here. We were like so far ahead. I think we should have jumped. Um, we could have jumped with like VAC. We just weren't, on, we, we didn't execute this too well and our tiny almost ended up dying because of it, but good four staff gets him out, which is nice. But yeah, we just go high ground. We have a ton of auras. They tried to force us back with like some sort of top push from Life Stealer, which wasn't terrible, but and my team was saying like, "Hey, TP back." But I'm, I, I told them like, "This beast is dead. He probably doesn't have buyback." Venge died. She probably doesn't have buyback. We have Aegis. We're obviously winning the game. We didn't know by this much. 
but like we're obviously winning the game don't tp back right like we don't need to split up don't give them a numbers advantage i i'm, I'm not saying all this but th this is the gist of what i'm saying right i'm basically saying like I, I was saying don't tp back right do not tp back just then, just get racks right they don't have anything um we were kind of like afraid of losing our tarp racks and them jumping us but um i felt in this moment we were just so far ahead where we shouldn't fear them we have aegis pa we have everything we need. We have, we had, I, I think we had double hex at this point. Yeah. Like even Lifestealer cannot feel safe. You know what I mean? This guy can just die. And they tried to wait for their beast, but by the time he came up, we already had taken Megas. And yeah, I think we fake back here, which is a good play. Anytime you're winning the game hard, you just fake back. Basically all you do is you leave and then you smoke and then enemy team gets lazy and, <laughs> and your PA jumps them. She probably could have waited on PA, let's be real. He probably could have waited because, you know, we could have like back Avalanche or back Hexed or something, but... You know, whatever it is, what it is, carry players. You know what I mean? They just want to be the star, of the, the stars of the show. It, it, it's tough. You know, it's a, it's a life you live. But oh, look at this. Okay, this was a good vac. This is actually a quick thing. I thought this vac was pretty good, pretty important vac. I think people don't understand these types of vacs. They always look look for three or four man vacs. Vac wall is also very good for just getting carry players stuck. Um, especially here, like life sealer that has slow built into his kit. His illusion slows him because um, you get the passives with wall of replica. And so I know he's stuck because his rage is on cooldown. Uh, he has satanic, but that won't stop the slow from the illusion. And so with rage on cooldown, I vac wall him and just the idea is literally keep this guy in place, right? And I know his rage is down and we keep him in place, keep him in place. Uh, I, I don't know how he got mana burn. Oh, is this silencer hitting him? <laughs> what the hell? The in steal is five in per hit with the shard. That's so funny. He ran out of mana. I was like, how did he not get rage off? I remember thinking in the moment, how did he not get Rage off? <laughs> he actually got mana burned by Silencer. What the hell? I don't think I've seen that before, even though that seems like something that would happen. That's too funny. Okay, well, yeah. And then this was a... All right, I'll end the video here. This is just a cool combo. I want to show you guys. This is really cool. Just a quick ping, you know? Just a little ping. I check my tiny's items. Uh, I think I, I check them here. Did I click on them? Yeah, I ping. I'm like, do you have blink? Do you have avalanche? He says yes. Hit the combo. Blink strike from PA with the battle fury. Oh god. Ah. Oh, goodness gracious. That was a wombo combo right there. That was that was a thing of beauty. That was a thing of beauty. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you can kind of see why our team prevailed this game. Yeah, hopefully you can kind of see why I think some of these teams are not so great the mistakes that they make and it's hard not to make those mistakes because you got to be constantly paying attention trust me i make those mistakes more than i'd like to admit but that's what it takes to be a good dota player you can't make those mistakes you can't die at the tier two but all right thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one and i'm out and that's all but remember before you leave come on before you tune out subscribe to the game leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank if you're stuck click the link down below and i'm out peace